bit. I don't want you to miss out on all this because this is quite kind of detailed in a way. ready long before, well, the next hour, uh -huh. this rate of drying. And holding back that, you see, because that's getting a bit of hard. Right now, we make those waiting. Now, Elizabeth, where are you? This is, uh, I'm going to make your kind. I think what you mean, you know. I was just guessing Paul, but... <laughs>
The measurement, I measured at that point, you understand? About right. Make your own bamboo handles or use bamboo handles? Yes, I use cane, cane, cane handles. Yes, yeah. that's, that's, that's what will go on to this. Unfortunately, I haven't got one yet. I don't know anybody else has. They mostly come from England, those yeah. cane handles. There's a man who makes them and sends them all over the world. Yeah, well. well that's Final 
stages, just to sharpen up those edges. It's a little bit soft still. Once again, this sponge is very useful in a place like that. I let that dry now a little bit, finish off these lugs, bore the holes through them there with the cora. Um, and then, a little bit later, I will flute the one. But you can see, it's a rather slow, laborious business. You know, there's a lot of work. You don't have to take as long making a teapot as long takes to do this. There are many other ways of cutting down on the time, but that doesn't mean to say you're going to get the same kind of salt. Okay, let's leave it at that. I think that's the major part done. It's now recording. Should we move a little closer to where his pot, where his lap is? He's not on the wheel now. Zoom it. It's about right. It's just, you know, it's not gone whitey yet quite. You know, it's just about the right Your dad is going to hire me to travel around and take all those pictures. If it's drier than that, you get a lot of powder. The wetter, it's rather like that before. It's rather like cutting through cheese. first cup, in the back of it, because they're going to cut the deeper cup, that first one is the deep, deep cup, and then two goes over like that, and it's shallower, until I'm up to the clip edge. Uh -huh. David, you were talking about your blade being beveled. Is it beveled on one side? Yes. Beveled on the, this side. This side, the leading edge, that's straight. Okay. What does the bevel do? Oh, it's just, just sharpening it. Oh, okay. You see, but instead of sharpening both sides, it cuts better if you only sharpen one side. Nice design quality at the bottom also. Have you 
I'll be doing a little bit more to those bugs. They're a little bit soft still, but when they're finished off, you'll see perhaps what I mean when I say, you know, I'm talking about the plastic roll bug not being quite so suitable for this. There's some things that have got angles like that, you see. So it's all pulled together. The art history buzzword is architectonic. <laughs> oh, sorry. In art history, the word that they use, the buzzword, the current art critic word is architectonic when it has that angular shape. Another, you know, you've got a lot of words in America that are not in Britain. <laughs> Don't get through to England. I always thought the language came from England to America. Well, it did, but then we improved. Oh, yeah. we, get, we, we get a lot of American improvement. Yes. Ah, <laughs> just such words as architectonic. Just. <laughs> That's Art Week Art Forum. Uh, BS. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's straight now, not curved like it was yesterday. Right. It's straight now. What, the sides of the pot? No, the, the, carving. the carving. It's straight. Yesterday he was... He was he doing a, a different form, a and he has a flat surface he's working on there. Oh. Yesterday he was doing a bowl, which had a natural curve to it. Oh, if we have a slide, so I've got a lot of slides. I don't know if going to show I will describe this people as an architect. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he adapts the fluting to the form. I see. Fluting is like cups. These are marbles and colors. This one's mine. It's going to be hard to understand why because it's a gritty clay. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you're not going to have a nice smooth yeah, yeah, So I would take, yeah, try on, yeah. uh, make an extra one and try on the first one. Yeah, 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 do Except that the star of glaze is going to cover it. See the celadon glaze. It's the thick hair. You have to do a celadon glaze on the star of glaze. It's going to be beautiful. When we do this last session. Yeah. You devil. <laughs> I thought I was so subtle. What, wheeling that big camera? Right? <laughs> this is not subtle? I'll hide it in my hair. <laughs> portion at a time. Thank you. 
wood up there? Mm -hmm. Easy? Down the tall though. Like it all is like flat. Is there a big kill? Slide, the side stuck in the wood during the first week of the fire because it's so slow. Really? The fire is just like, things that you can't fire so you go right on up. Uh, the last day the side stuck. Just the last day. We have to, we have to split a couple of cords down to this. Right, so Clothing. Remember? So you, you had the verse yesterday. Is that clothing on that pot? She wants to know. Okay, <laughs> Shirley. <laughs> yes. Not in the nude anymore. Yes. <laughs> Got a decently covered. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference. I think yeah, but that's okay. I think they want. Well, do you want to be crouching across or walking normally? <laughs> this poor woman bent at the wheel. Just completing the art architectonic touches. <laughs> I'm sorry. David, that's the kind of stuff I have to read, and you can imagine. It would be phony to use a lower down stamp here. Oh, that's why I asked. <laughs> you think I should put DL and then AR? I'm with some lunch. <laughs> oh, but of course. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Got a market in its place, right? David, would you mind holding it up so I can I can see the seal and get it? Oh, you done. want to see the seal? Yes. Oh, I'm on the photo. Okay. Um, see that? Yes. Shot. Thank you. Bullseye shellac. Okay. I don't know, I don't know what does. No, put it up by your face and smile like they do with the toothpaste. Bullseye shellac. That's good. That's good. Don't use anything but bullseye shellac. <laughs> All right, I'm selling that to the bullseye people for a million bucks here. Diane, if you get tired, <laughs> If I get tired, we'll set it up like we did this morning. Well, that stuff smells. David, did you ever get uh, lightheaded from using that stuff in the studio? Okay. Especially if you get a bit thirsty. <laughs> shellac. <laughs> Take that up in the mountains. <laughs> this was known as a Japanese shellac. It's known as English shellac. English shellac. He said yesterday it didn't come from the Orient, it came from Norway. Oh, is that interesting? I always use some, but I have some. Okay, well, here's the extra one. Those Got that in. people and their shellac, you gotta watch out. It leaves thick and thin areas, and the thick areas are not translucent, and the thin areas are. But I'm putting it on double, if you see what I mean. What purpose does it serve? Yeah, uh, when you take the sponge and wipe the pot down, where there's no slack, the clay will come up. Where there's a slack, it will stay there. So when you get done, it'll be raised where the slack is. And then once it's fired, you have a cell and you build a hole of the light and see through it. It'll be oh. translucent. Uh, with right, a how do you thin out the poison? Just with a sponge. He'll do it here in a second. And so the effect is what? After it's a sponge. It's translucent where the slack is.